Hello, it's Ronnie Yoga Debbie coming to you from my home in Leamington. And I am checking in with you today to follow up on a video that has been requested about the joints of the body. So where we have to start when we talk about joints of the body is with your actual bones of your body because where your bones are connected, that's where your joints are. So here's your body. There's your body. Here's your skull, which is your cranium, your spine, which is your cervical vertebrae. And that would be your C-spine if you go to a chiropractor. Uh, collarbone, shoulder blade, sternum, which your ribs attach to. The humerus, which is not funny, when you hit your elbow, your rib cage, and the ribs are all attached at the top and the lower ribs float, so they're not at all attached. They um, help to protect your, your heart and your lungs. The spine, um, the dorsal and the lumbar vertebrae. So dorsal is your thoracic spine and your lumbar vertebrae is your lower back. And your ulna, and your radius, your pelvis, the bones of your hands, which are your metacarpals, and your flanges, which are your carpals, your fingers, your femur bone, your kneecap, your fibula, your tibia, and your foot bones, which are your metatarsals and flanges. So your flanges are your toes, and your metatarsals are these bones inside of your foot. Same bones, basically, as the bones in your hand, they have the same sort of structure, except your foot also has some muscles that help support the arch because you don't have an arch in your hand. So anyhow, that's, those are your main bones. And your spine is a pretty important aspect of your body. And so here is your spine, your cervical vertebrae, and then you go to your thoracic or dorsal vertebrae. And then you go to your lumbar vertebrae, your sacrum, and your coccyx, which is your tailbone. So the spine it starts at the top and goes to the bottom of your back. The little bones that make up the spine, they're connected with one another, and they enable us to keep upright. Those are your um vertebrae and they are jointed bones they connect the pelvis to the skull these vertebrae are mobile except for the sacrum and the coccyx at the bottom because they are fused at the back um, coccyx is fused at the back the sacrum is fused at the front they enable the top of our body to carry out everyday movements and thanks to our spine we are able to bend forward and backwards and from left to right the spine plays another significant part. It protects our spinal cord, and that's where our nervous system lives. The vertebrae are hollow, so the spinal cord within can be connected to the brain. All our sensations travel through the spinal cord, and this is the zone near the nerve center. It is easy to understand why we find back massages so relaxing. And when our back is hurting, why we... Uh, do not feel good why we uh, when we're out of place somewhere in our spine why our back hurts so much and how important it is to maintain healthy musculature to support your spine even if you're doing the, all the right things sometimes your spine can still go out of whack like like happened with me um yeah i've gone that i've gotten that i banged my head really good right about here on the kitchen counter and the pressure of that went right through my spine and I put my neck out and in between my thorax some of that was out and my low, lower back and fortunately my pelvis wasn't off too much like I went up to Toronto and it was still okay um, and I had hit my head before I went to Toronto and because I saw my sports medicine doctor and he said the pelvis was okay. But after a while, when something is not out, not in place, is out of place, what happens is they all start to 
try to correct what they can and then other things go into place that were in place and the muscles all lock everything tighter and tighter the longer you go without seeing the chiropractor so it's unfortunate i didn't get to see a chiropractor in toronto but the lady that i used to see in toronto was off and they didn't have anybody available when i went to my sports medicine doctor otherwise i would have seen somebody in toronto but instead i saw somebody here in leamington that i had never seen before and does a different type of chiropractic um, than what I normally have and it was just a little bit too aggressive for me. Uh, your spine is not that different from this. It, it will move. Your, your spine basically looks like that. This is your neck and this would be your lumbar spine. So here's um, the spine and then I'm thinking about this chiropractic treatment that I had also. The chiropractic treatment was a little bit more aggressive than what I normally go for. It was basically a table and the table had sections at the bottom that the chiropractor would press a button and it would just drop boom, 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 while you were on it. Boom, 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 boom. And it was way too aggressive for this body and I am used to yoga and doing things gently and I need to because my body uh, my body is it's fragile in some ways but it's strong in other ways like my musculature is quite strong but my spine is not strong and that's why all of this has to be so strong when I was a kid I had open heart surgery so all my ribs are wired together right at the sternum because they open that up to get in to do the open heart surgery that's how they used to do it they don't do it that way anymore they go in they go in sometimes laparoscopically if it's lower and like if it's lower in the spine and they're doing surgery but if they're doing like open heart surgery they go right in like around here between the ribs and there's just the tiniest little scar depending on how how much work they have to do in my case they had to build wall build walls in my heart um, so there you go. That's a little bit of my background. Um, and why I know so much about how you got to keep your, your spine really strong and your muscles surrounding your spine are a, a huge part of that. And why you need to know about all your joints, because if any one of your joints that supports your body is not doing its job properly, then you have a problem right from the foot on up. Like even if your ankle bone is kind of moving funny or clicking because you sprained it when you were a kid, which is my case with my left ankle. If you had had an injury uh, that impeded your body's capacity to move normally, um, then, then that will carry up the body until it is resolved as much as possible. So it's really important to do foot exercises. I'm not going to get into that today, but it's very important to do foot exercises and ankle exercises because anything that you do standing, um, including walking, dancing, standing in the kitchen, doing work is affected by your posture. Your basic posture comes from your foot. If you've got a good, strong foot posture, then then a foot posture and foot strength, then it's a little easier to have good posture through your spine. Uh, it's very, very important to think about your spine and think about lengthening up through the spine and then kind of relaxing in so that your body is in the best spinal position as possible for you to sit, stand, move, whatever you might be doing. So you can see why when even if you're doing all the right things, if something is out, it's not going to go back into place on its own. So you need either to get massage or chiropractic. Sometimes massage will allow the muscles to relax enough that the bones will gently go back into their own place. But sometimes it's a little bit more aggressive what's happened. And then you need to see a chiropractor. And in the case of somebody like me, there are certain things that go out that my body cannot correct all on its own despite the work that I do because my ribs are wired together there's that much more pressure on my neck and on my lower back so that that cervical spine and that lumbar spine gets a lot of pressure due to the abnormality in the thoracic spine so now we're going to talk about 
the types of, of uh, joints that we have in our body. So you have uh, pivot joints and you have hinge joints in your body. Your legs have joints at the hip, the knee and the ankle, and your arms also have three joints, the shoulder, the elbow and the wrist. However, these joints do not all work in the same way. Some are called pivot joints and that would be your neck and your hip and they turn. So your neck, cervical vertebrae has the capacity to do this. Your thoracic vertebrae has only the capacity to go like this. And when you turn here, you're actually turning from your lumbar, your, your lower back. And then of course your, um, your lumbar uh, moves only this way, this way, and arches and rounds that way. And then you have hinge joints as well. And that's your elbows and your knees and they simply bend and the muscles on the side where they bend are the ones that are active and working and the others are passive at that point they would be active when the leg is leg or arm or is lengthening so that is most of what you need to know about a joint so there's a picture of a knee in this little book and there's a knee joint and it shows you the type of architecture that the knee joint has. So there's padding in that knee and the padding in the knee is the blue, which is, oh, that's cartilage. That's cartilage in your knee. And there's also um, some substances that are in there, joint fluid uh, to help protect the tendons also help to protect the joint above and below. And of course, there's a kneecap here that also helps to protect the front of the knee against impact, mostly against impact. Like if you fall, you're going to hurt your, fall on your knee, you're going to hurt your, the skin over the knee before you're going to hurt, hurt the kneecap. And then before you hit, hit the, hit the actual joint, the kneecap can be knocked out of place from the side as well. But uh, generally the kneecap is a pretty good bone for protecting your knee joint and same thing here with your elbow joint it's it's very similar it's got a, a cap over it to protect it and um, it, it moves in much the same way the the forearm can move in more ways than your lower leg your calf doesn't move that much left and right it's the, the ankle that does the move in that area and the hip but again the hip is, is a hinge hinge joint as well so um I'm not sure what else people want to know about the joints. Um, I think I read that. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I read this earlier, but I didn't actually write, read this to you. The bones of the skeleton cannot hold themselves together on their own. They are connected to one another by joints. Without joints, we would be as stiff as a board. A joint is the meeting place between two bones. It enables us to bend or turn our wrists or ankles. For example, the ends of bones are made up of cartilage, a sort of cushion in our joints, which enables our bones to move smoothly. Bones are kept in place by ligaments and the joints by a fatty, oily liquid, which makes movements easier. Consequently, the human body is able to carry out a wide range of motions with hardly effort at all, as long as everything is properly lined. There's that picture of the joint. This is the knee joint, same joint that we just talked about there. Uh, the knee joint is one of the one that people ones that people have the most problems with. So that tells you a little bit more about joints. And if there's something in particular you want to know about a particular joint, please let me know. Um, your joints are where you often feel pain if there's arthritis. So if there's arthritis in your thumb. You're going to probably feel it mostly here. That's where the joint, but the main joint is where the thumb connects with the actual palm of the hand. Um, and you may also feel it at this joint or even this joint, depending on if you've had an injury to your thumb. If you've fallen and your thumb has been part of catching your fall, it may get injured and get arthritis more easily than the other side. That's just kind of the way your joints work. And if you're standing in an imbalanced way, then 
the joints on the side that you're leaning more on will get more pressure put on them and the other side those joints will not get as much pressure put on them and that will affect the musculature and the size of the muscles and everything so um, another thing that's interesting to note is that from one side of the body to the other our bodies might be different not just because of the joints but because of the bones themselves like you may have a longer femur bone that's your thigh bone on one side of your body than the other which would mean that your hip and your knee and your ankle on that side of your body where the bone is longer would have more pressure on it than the other so or the bone maybe the bone will bend over time to accommodate and then you've got something else happening that's causing the joint to go in a different way at like different pressure because if a joint if a joint is impacted by a bone that's going like this then that joint has got more pressure on it in particular places and less pressure on others same with the lower lower and above joint will be impacted so it's it's important to to kind of if you're having pain in joints any joint whether it's you know ankle knees hips find out where that discomfort is coming from it's probably not the joint itself although it could be as you've if you've already got arthritis or osteoarthritis but if you're younger that pain that joint pain is not coming from arthritis it's coming from direct pressure from below and um, so that's why you want to really see what's going on it's why it's good to see a chiropractor massage therapist uh, a reflexologist to see what's going on with your bones and if somebody is not qualified to to assess you the way that you want they'll refer you to somebody else like a reflexologist is not an expert on the bones they're an expert on the feet and the hands perhaps eyes perhaps ears depending on their uh, reflexology training you can do facial reflexology you can do auricular reflexology you can do uh, ocular reflexology you can do full body reflexology you can do foot reflexology and hand reflexology so there's quite a, a few different types of reflexology out there I tend to work <clears throat> mostly with hands <coughs> but also with feet for my own self also do I do some oracular stuff my mother is a, a trained and certified reflexologist so I was alongside with her while she was getting her training and I also have all the training manuals um, for the reflexology association of Canada at my disposal because I have a copy of them as well as my mom um, so reflexes are really important reflexes um, help you to maintain comfort in the body if you know the reflex to your back even if your back is out you can help it that way you can also help it by doing a, some yoga asanas like some lower back work for like cobra will help the lower back if it's not exactly where it ought to be um, you can help yourself to a certain extent leading up to seeing a chiropractor or a massage therapist or whatever type of a therapist that you need to help you out when your body isn't functioning well like mine is not right now so I will be seeing my regular chiropractor on Tuesday <sighs> I'm so grateful for him. I, I did um, I did go to a different type of chiropractic after I hurt hurt my neck because I couldn't get into him, my regular guy, uh, for a little while um, before I went away. And the the other guy that I used to work with, who my current chiropractor um, had worked with in Leamington, he's moved to LaSalle. So I went back there to see if I could get an appointment there and they couldn't take me for two weeks so that wasn't acceptable because I really needed somebody right now so I went to somebody who does a different type of chiropractic and trust me that once you find the right style of chiropractic to treat you and you're comfortable and your adjustments are good and they hold you don't want to switch um, I 
went to a chiropractor that I don't even know what style this chiropractor is and I'm not going to name the chiropractor because that type of chiropractic may work for some people who are heavier set and bigger bones and stuff but for somebody who's um who's a, of a small build with smaller bones um particularly women who are small bones a really aggressive style of chiropractic is not very good um, I'm not sure if I already described this because I, I did this video once and I didn't like it and deleted it. So think about your spinal bones as being like this. Let's imagine this is our uh, crown chakra and from the crown chakra we go down to the root chakra and all the bones line up in between. Now, so think about this going down and these bones being here. Now if something's out of place bent like that it affects everything below it see how the this all crinkles well your muscles your bones your ligaments everything also move according to that and then if something is out at the top you'll have the opposite reaction at the bottom of the spine as your spine tries to find some sort of balance because that's what your body does it tries to find balance despite what you might do to it so I mean, it's very important that you have a nice balance of your spine and it, it starts with your feet but also goes up into the pelvis i'll just show you really quickly um what happens with your pelvis when your when your lower back is at i'll have to pull this in a little bit so you can see um right now my spine is not in an ideal position i'm tuck, tucking under a little bit because what's happening is if i stand if I stand without thinking about it, my back is going like this, which is arching too much. And that's because there's so much difficulty right here. So I'm having to very consciously take my tailbone and tuck it under to have my, my spine in a nice position. This is really important. It, that's the next thing after your feet being properly aligned is for your pelvis to be properly aligned so that your hips can be lined up uh, directly below your shoulders and if your hips are lined up directly below your shoulders then everything in, in between is going to be at its its ideal even if you're out of place it's still going to be better than if your alignment is off and as well as your spine so I'm talking muscular alignment at this point in time as opposed to uh, spinal alignment because if your if your spine is out you are spinally misaligned and you need to um, get the subluxations the subluxations are the individual uh, spinal bones um, that are out of place so when there's a subluxation things instead of going right straight through the nerve going right straight through the channel let's make the channel bigger instead of everything going through the channel <coughs> excuse me in an open capacity, this is happening. And the nerves are kind of squished and pinched. And the more pinched they are, the more off of alignment they are, the worse that gets. And each nerve that is pinched off um, <coughs> affects a part of the body. So as you go down the spine, you can actually look this up. You can look up a map of the spine and where the nerves go to. And you're cutting off the nerve nerve flow uh, to another part of your body because you've got inside of this um, you have all of the the nerves going I think uh, na, 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 na. yeah there we go your spinal cord spinal cord here so there's this it's like a tube inside where your nerves are and then you've got all this cushioning in between your joints. <coughs> and these cushions, <coughs> excuse me, my throat is just driving me nuts today. <coughs> your, um, these are discs that are in between each one of your vertebrae so that your vertebrae have a little bit of cushioning when you move they move from side to side so um, when your spine is out these get squished so let's say this spine is out this way then it that one will become like that and the other one will go like that kind of triangularly and they'll get squished 
in order to make these little machinations in order to try and straighten out the spine despite the fact that your vertebrae are not in place so it's really very important if you have a subluxation in your spine to get rid of it and i know for a fact that i've got several on here at least one or maybe two and one or two here and the lumbar spine um probably one out there the pelvis i think is okay but uh, i'll check in with you later on to see um how i feel <coughs> excuse me after i see the chiropractor it seems to me that this cough is part of the neck being out um, that's another thing you can check you can check that you, where in your th in your neck do you have nerves that are going to your throat and i i would suspect that it's you know the upper two or three vertebrae that would affect the neck i haven't haven't looked at the map of the body but i i will look at the map of the body again very soon uh, because that map of the body really does show you exactly where all the nerves are running to. So if you're feeling a specific uh, symptom, chances are something is out or a muscle is tight in that general area where the nerves are coming from in order for that to happen. So I guess that's all for now. Thank you very much for, for tuning in. And if anybody has any more questions about uh, joints, uh, about the nervous system, about the spine, or about chiropractic care, or massage, let me know. Um, if you're in Ontario, I can give you more specific advice than if you're not in Ontario, uh, just because the systems run a little bit differently in other provinces and in other countries. But uh, the same sort of system should, uh, should exist where you live. Anyhow, that's about all for now. Rani Yoga Devi signing off, and I'll, I'll see you when I'm feeling better. Thanks. Bye-bye for now.